I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and we're going to talk about data frames in Snowpark to follow up on our last episode where we did uh, getting started with Snowpark episode. And today we're going to take a look at one of the basic building blocks of your snow your snowpark environment which is the data frame let's get to it looking for a file download of the code done in today's video make sure to check out my downloads page the link is in the description okay guys so this is a pretty fun one today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, data frames in snowpark and uh, this is a follow-up to last uh, the last video I did on uh, Snowpark, getting started with Snowpark and doing the installation and all that stuff. So make sure you notice at the top right there it says uh, version 3.8.10. You do need version 3.8 in order to work with Snowpark and uh, that's very important. Um, newer versions will not work um, and uh, older versions will not work either. Um, so what we're going to do first is uh, after we get our installation uh, we can do uh, from snowflake.snowpark, we'll import our session, and the session object is going to allow us to do all kinds of things inside of Snowpark, which is great. Um, I'm just going to set that uh, uh, my session variable equal to none there. I'll give a little bit of feedback saying connecting, and then I can uh, I'll create my uh, connection parameters there. And as I've mentioned in uh, my previous videos on the Snowflake connector for Python, um, the connection parameters will allow you to, um, you know, connect directly into Snowflake, directly to where you're going to be working. And so it's nice to be able to use uh, the warehouse parameters, uh, warehouse database and schema parameters to make sure that you sort of get to the place that you want to get to so that you're working in the, in the right place. Um, and those snow account, snow user, and snow pass, those are variables that I loaded up above the from statement there. So those are just variables that have my information in there. Of course, you will change those to use your uh, credentials. And uh, so what we'll do is we're going to uh, go to our project warehouse, our project database, and our project schema. And uh, that will sort of complete our parameters and we'll be ready to to go to get connected here. So I'm going to put this inside of a try except uh, finally block here because I'd, what I would like to do is I'd like to uh, check for that session. If I get an error in what I'm doing, I'm going to get an error and I want to catch that um, and print out the error and then uh, exit gracefully and close my session so I don't leave it open. Uh, in the background there. Uh, but uh, the first thing that we'll do in our try block is we're going to create that session. Um, we're going to use the uh, builder uh, and put our configurations in there and then we'll use the dot create uh, in order to do that. And then uh, we can finish our accept and finally blocks here. So I'll just do exception as E and I'll just print E if we get one of those and I'll do um, I finally block and I'll say if if there's a session there I'll say scss.close and uh, and then I'll print uh, connection closed uh, after that uh, so that the connection get clo gets closed and the session's closed and then I can print done at the end uh, so that we know our script is done and uh, that's sort of a nice little sort of uh, structure for us to work within so that we can uh, you know catch anything that goes wrong uh, there's our accept exception and we're going to print that and then finally if we've got that uh, we'll close and then uh, we'll do our connection close so so that's sort of how that one works and uh, we can now go back and we can sort of work on our session here and that's our our session that we uh, we use the builder with, and uh, we will go ahead and create a data frame. Now, data frames are are really great. They're not the same data frames as pandas data frames, although we are going to convert one to a pandas data frame. So just be aware of that, and we can use the table 
uh, method here, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, put the name of the table that we're gonna work with uh, in quotes there, and then we can show the top ten rows. Uh, the dot show method will show us the top ten rows uh, that are in that table, and you can see that went very quickly. It returned those ten. I don't even know if there's more than ten in that row or in that table, um, uh, but you can see there's a kale farm, a blueberry farm, olive farm, apple orchard, skyscraper, so you can see the data is there and it actually outputs it in sort of a nice format um, to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to the console there and uh, that is uh, looking good. So we've got a project table and uh, we can grab that and, and these execute lazily on the server so when you when you create the data frame it is not filled with data until you actually do something with it. Um, so if you use .collect like we did in our last uh, video where we used .sql, um, you can do that. Uh, or you can do a .show and that's going to um, grab the, the first rows of the data frame uh, for you to, to look at. So in this case we did our staff table and um, so that's a, a very important thing to remember. It's a little different than uh, when we were working with the Snowflake connector where we would actually return, um, as soon as we created the data frame, that was bringing all the data over, over the wire and into our data frame locally for us to work with. Uh, we can actually do operations with the session uh, here using data, <clears throat> using data frames and we can have those operations execute completely on the server without any sort of, you know, coming back to our uh, local workstation here. So in this case, I'm getting the project staff table, which is a junction table. Um, so we've looked at projects and we've looked at staff and now we're doing what's called a junction table. Where we're saying these staff belong to these projects in a many to many uh, relationship. And so what we what we what I want to show is that um, we've got all of these here, and we may want to um, look at a view that's on on Snowflake as opposed to looking at a table that's on Snowflake because views often bring all of this data together in in a nice output, um, and so you can have your staff and your projects together in one table showing which staff are on which projects. And that's very often the case, and so you can still use the dot table uh, method here, and that is going to uh, return uh, the view data as opposed to the table data. And as you can see, this view has you know project name, project description, last name, first name, date of birth, date start, and date end. That's the date they started on that project. And so you can see the associated data is there. It's all collapsed because the window is very, very narrow there. But if you put this into some other kind of output, um, it would look great. Um, and so that is how you can also see a views data uh, in a data frame, just the same way that you would do it for a table. But you might ask, well, how could I filter that and get only the rows that I want in my data frame that I want from that table? Um, and, you know, last time we did it using a select statement uh, using .sql, but we can do that uh, with the data frames. We can use the table and we can chain on um, .filter and we can say, uh, and we can put the column name in there and uh, and we're going to say column last name is equal to Cooper. So we're only going to get the rows that are for Cooper. And uh, okay, there we go. I broke it. So you can see the name column C O L is not defined. And so because we use try accept, it gave me the error, but it still closed that connection. And that's because I did not bring in the column uh, from Snowpark here. So I'm going to do from Snowflake dot snowpark dot functions I'll import col for column and uh, now that should be fine if I do an F5 on there and uh, there we go so now we've got um, the filtered data that was brought back into our data frame and uh, we can 
I've done dot show on that. It only has two rows in it. Uh, but for our intents and purposes here, um, that's going to do exactly what we want to do. But you know, what if I wanted to only see a couple of those columns? I don't want to see all of those columns in there. I'm only looking for, you know, uh, where Cooper was assigned to a project and when he started or she started. And, uh, and I can do that by doing dot select on there. So I'll chain on there again. I'll say uh, dot select and then I'll put the column and the column name project underscore name and then I can do a, I can put a couple of those in there. I'll say column uh, date start and uh, those two columns are the ones that I want and so I can chain those in and I can I can actually make this multi line here. I think this is a little bit <laughs> long of a line here. This is kind of spaghetti. Um, so I can do it right at the filter there. I can uh, do that and I can also do it right at the select. Uh, there's a couple of places that you can do it. And so um, that's going to give us a little bit nicer of a line there. So now we've got our data frame view off of the view, which is our project staff view. And we're only going to get the rows with Cooper for the last name and we're only going to get the project name and date start columns. So now if I hit uh, F5, now you can see I get a snowpark data frame here uh, which looks great. It's got our two, our blueberry farm and our marathon and the start dates uh, for those two projects uh, for Cooper. And uh, so that's a, that's a really great way of doing it. And you could also say, well, I want to have that view in a pandas data frame because I want to do all this pandas stuff to it. Um, now I can do that as well. And we can pull that down into a pandas data frame. And I would note that the pandas data frame is going to be, that's going to be a local um, construct. <laughs> it's going to have local data, whereas you can do operations uh, completely within Snowpark without bringing any data locally. Um, and so that's something to uh, to think about. But in this case, I can go df pandas is equal to df view dot two pandas, and then I'll use the pandas command dot head to get the top ten records from there. Even though I know there's only two, and uh, you can see now there's our two rows that we filtered from that view uh, in a pandas data frame with the index on the left, um, just as you would normally see in a pandas data frame. And that is uh, exactly what we wanted to see there. Um, and so that's kind of like some of the main things. I think the next thing I'll show is sort of like how to create a table from it because you may want to do a query or create some data frame and then and then uh, put that into a table, um, which you know, as I mentioned, it would be, all of this sort of happens on the server so I could do df view dot write uh, dot mode and I'll do uh, overwrite in case there's a table already there and uh, I'm gonna do uh, dot save as table and I'll put the uh, table name in there so I'll call it Cooper uh, project um, and that should do it Cooper projects and so now I can take that data frame that I have, that I've sort of created, and I can save it as a table and have that entirely uh, sort of happen on the server, you know, because obviously if there was like a whole ton of records, you don't want to bring all of those to your local workstation. Uh, you can just have that um, written to another table, and then you can work on that table if you want, if you want to. So in this case, we could do df cooper equals uh, session dot table uh, cooper projects, and then we can read the you know the first contents of that table using df cooper dot show, and uh, and that's going to do it. So I'll comment out our previous uh, 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 output, and now we're just going to have our cooper output. There's our data frame that we're writing using overwrite and save as table. And uh, let's take a look here and see how this one looks. And so I'll hit F5 there, and you can see, there we go, it started. 
and there is our so this is a snowpark data frame that we have returned from our new table in in snowflake in our uh, in our database there and uh, that has created that table exactly the way that we wanted to see it and uh, so now you know how to write back to a table as well from a data frame and um, now I would mention a couple other things I'm kind of going for the highlights here today as opposed to an encyclopedic uh, uh, reference of everything that data frames can do but sort of like the major operations so you probably want to know how can I do more than one condition? Um, so you can do that using the ampersand for and. And so you could say, you know, last name is Cooper and um, the first name is, I think it's Wanda in this uh, database. But you need to make sure that you put each of those conditions inside of its own bracket so that it can evaluate to true or false each of those conditions and then have another uh, obviously on the dot filter brackets you know you need to make sure that you don't forget those and so there's your ampersand for and you could also say or using the bar and uh, and so that would be uh, last name Cooper or first name Wanda um, and we could run that one obviously in this case it's going to get exactly the same because it's such a small table uh, but those are two ways of doing that filtering and uh, and I think that will be very very handy for you and uh, I encourage you to experiment with these and uh, try different results uh, because that will help you go a long way and that's how you can use Snowpark data frames in Python on Snowflake. Want to join my community and help support my work? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description.